I promise this is it. This is the last video dedicated to 3D printer parts. Let's get started. First ones uh, up are these two. Uh, if for no other reason just to get them out of my way, um, these combined were $107.42. Uh, this is why my Patreon patrons are the greatest. Um, this was when I was deciding on the frame for the 3D printer. I had bought linear rails. And the reason for the linear rails is so I can use anything for the frame and can save money. But I got to a point where the thought of uh, drilling so many holes into, you know, aluminum bar stock or something and have them have to be so precise and putting riv nuts in and all sorts of things, it was giving me so much anxiety that I actually just decided to go with aluminum extrusions. So these are packages, both of these are packages of aluminum extrusions. Ah, there we go. So let me get the other one open and I will share the plan with you. Oh my god. Um, so this is a, this represents a lot of money. So I was quite nervous to order it, but the problem is that, you know, the 10 or so hours I was going to spend drilling holes, this should make up for it. So these are, jeez. I thought there was more too. Okay. So put these on here and these guys. Okay. So what I have here, uh, these are four. 600 mil pieces, so 600 millimeters from one end to the other. That's uh, just about two feet. And that represents the length of the 3D printer. Not sure why I got four. I think it's because the listings were in four packs. These were the cheapest that I could find. So anyways, four of these, and then I should have uh, 12. So that's four. Yeah, 12 400 millimeter long pieces. So, you know, a foot and a quarter, foot, something like that. Um, foot and a third. And the, the deal is I'm going to do the 500 mil length, uh, 400 mil width this way, and then 400 mil height. So I needed enough of these 400 mils. Yeah. Um, this is going to be awesome. So the reason I went with this is so I don't have to drill holes. I'll just use the little T-nuts. And on top of that, these parts are all reusable. So if I ever decide that the 3D printer is too small and I want to expand to, you know, 800 mil or, uh, you know, 1200 mil, um, all I have to do is undo the corners, undo the rails, get longer rails, get longer extrusions and make the whole darn thing longer. So these parts are reusable. I will be able to, you know, take this 3D printer apart, build something else with it, for example. Um, so I went with the investment to get the extrusions. They are, they're really expensive. It goes against the core of my channel, but, um, you know, I was talking to a good friend of mine uh, about my anxieties about drilling all these holes perfectly and he said you know what if it was me I would go with the extrusions and so 
here we are. So now I've got a ton of extrusions, cost me a ton of money, but hopefully this will last me, you know, forever. All right, I get to reuse these in other projects if I'm sick of the 3D printer. And if the 3D printer just stays together and still works, then I can use it as is. So yeah, a buttload of extrusions. This one here is a very similar vein. Um, this says linear guide. I forgot to put the price on it. Oh well, no big deal. Um, this is simply because when I showed you the linear guides on the last episode, um, I had gotten, I had planned for the, the big 500 mil length one to go back and forth. And I figured that was a dumb idea. And so now I got an extra 500 mil one. So it's only the short length that's going to go up and down. I also made another discovery. Um, but that's a sneak peek. There we go. So yeah, this one should be uh, 550 mils in length. I need to go grab something to measure that. It is indeed 550 mils in length. You guys probably won't be able to see that. Uh, yeah, 550 mils. Uh, it's just about 21 and a half inches, just over 21 and a half inches. And here's the other one I had. So the plan is that these two are gonna go along the long axis and they're gonna move back and forth and they're gonna move back and forth together and then I'll have another axis coming across this way which will be moving together like this. So instead of having this move back and forth like this and the print head be here and go like this, these two are gonna be sitting, you know, kind of like that and the print head will be on a sh much shorter piece going back and forth like this and like this. So yeah, I do wanna show you one thing though. So these, this is the MGN9H that I just got in the mail and this is the extrusions that they'll be going on top. Now, if you look carefully, the extrusion here, the hole in here is almost the width of this rail. So you really have to get this rail centered really precisely in order for it not to flip one side or the other. Now, I'm going to be able to do that. I've actually designed a part to do that. But in the future, I'll probably end up if I ever have to buy rails again, and if you're planning on doing that, this is uh, this is a MGN 9H, this is a MGN 15H, so it's 15 mils wide instead of this 9 mils wide, and this fits a lot better on the rail. So I would recommend if you're buying rails to do a project, the 9 is the cheapest for sure, but it doesn't fit properly on these rails. I'm going to try to make it work. I might give up and buy bigger rails, but um, yeah, for a different project, which is a sneak peek at this point, um, I've got these wider rails. And now that I have these in my hands, I'm thinking these are pretty silly. And look at the difference in the mounting hole spacing. Like everything looks better with these guys. In fact, these guys are so rigid. I think I could have made the axis going across this way the, in the, I guess it's going to be the Y axis out of only this and not these um, extrusions, but it is what it is. Next one up is this one here. Uh, this is January 26th to February 18th, $7.86. I actually don't remember what this is, but that's okay. Oh yeah, now I remember. More belt. Um, yeah, I have decided to go with a Core XY machine. Uh, so that means, I mean, I'll put a diagram up on the screen here. But uh, that means that the, the GT2 belt is going to be quite long. And I also made sure to get the belt, I don't know if you can tell, with the metal inside. So this is going to be super strong belt. I'll be able to tension it up like crazy. This should be 5 meters about 15 feet of it, uh, but I was I already have 15 feet of, of this stuff, but in white, uh, but I was afraid that it wouldn't be enough, so I had to order some more. So $8, you know, the thing is, 
once I get the momentum to start this project, it's going to be a huge project. It's going to probably going to be a, a 15 or 20 part video for the entire build. Um, once I get started, I don't want to lose steam. I want to, you know, full steam ahead and get it, get it done, I guess, you know? When I have time to work on it, I don't want to have to be able to, I don't want to have to wait for parts from China. So there we go, $8 back in the stockpile. Actually, this one here is in the exact same vein. Um, $13.90. This is super expensive for what it is, and you'll see what it is shortly. January 26th to March 12th. And this is eight pulleys. And again, this has to do with the Core XY mechanism that I've decided to go with. The Core XY mechanism needs a bunch of pulleys to kind of snake around and just thinking about it now, I may not have enough. I think I did the math, but I may not have done the math properly. Anyways, these are four pulleys. Uh, they're aluminum pulleys. They're the right width for a GT2 timing belt. So uh, that should fit. Yep, that fits nice and snug in there. And I've got four of them without teeth. I think they fit on a five millimeter shaft. They have bearings and everything. So I guess, I guess that's why they, they're kind of pricey. And I have four of them with teeth. And again, this the pulley should go right. Yeah, so the belt fits perfectly in there. That is good too. And so yeah, because the uh, belts have to snake around like that, I needed some pulleys to have some, some play. I could have used 3D printed pulleys, but my I'm going to have a lot of... Um, brain load you know I'm gonna be thinking already a lot about what I'm doing so I don't want to be encumbered by having to design these things as well as like the stepper motor mounts the rail mounts the uh, axis mounts the, uh, the the mounts that bolted onto the table yeah I figured these things will be just nice to have in stock if I need more I will design some more in a CAD program but yeah, these pulleys used to be, they used to be only, uh, you know, you used to pay five bucks and get 10 of them, but that's, it's not like that anymore. I might check again if they come, if they've come down in price since I bought these, then maybe I'll get some, but I mean, I've been trying to buy resistors the other day and uh, it's like three bucks for a hundred instead of a dollar for a hundred. So it is what it is, but yeah, again, needed these in stock and now I got them. And the final part for today uh, is actually an accident, but whatever. Happy little accidents. Uh, stepper motor, one of these. And this is $11.99, January 3rd to March 1st. Now, I'm not sure. I bought two of them. I bought one on Amazon for a couple bucks more, like probably $13, bucks, $13.99, something like that. And I bought one on AliExpress. Uh, for that price. So yeah, I don't know which one is is which but uh, here's another one So Yeah, this is the second stepper motor I got and again, this is one of these little uh, pancake ones and That is solely to run the extruder now. I decided not to send back the Amazon bot like one of these two is Amazon bot and I think they're identical, but I decided not to send back any of them uh, simply because I'll have a spare motor for the extruder. And if one day I want to run dual extruders, there we go. I got it. Um, also, while this thing's not being used in the printer, I can always use it for other projects. I have um, some control projects I want to show you guys. There's all sorts of things I want to do. And uh, having a stepper motor won't be wasted. And I mean, at this point, I'm in for a penny, I'm in for a dime, right? So, yeah, this is the same as what you've seen before. It's uh, just a small pancake stepper motor. has less torque, but on a 3 to 1 uh, gear ratio extruder, like the uh, BMG that I'll be using, this will work just fine. And so, yeah, this uh, pile of parts... Uh, minus a whole bunch of these extrusions that I left over there uh, makes up for today's mailbag. I I hope I don't need to reiterate 
how much the Patreon support helps for projects like this. Um, I spent far more than the, even the total amount that Patreon has brought in um, since the start, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this if it wasn't for the Patreon support because, you know, covering half of a project is still better than, than covering the entire project. Um, so I really love you guys' support. I, I especially like the comments. I like comments on regular YouTube as well, but the early comments on Patreon, that's where the gold is at. So I want to thank you guys all for watching. I hope to catch you in the next one.